Hello everyone, welcome back to Forza Motorsport 1 and in the last episode we managed to win the Lotus Exige. So we're going to jump in that car today instead of the Vauxhall VX220, should be right next to it, it is, and that's B2. And we're going to jump in that and do uh, another lightweight challenge, but this time in the Championship Series. And this is going to be a little bit longer, but hopefully it shouldn't be too bad. And by the end of it, hopefully we'll own a GT40. Right, so ultra lightweight here. First place receives a GT40. And we're against Lotus Exiges. And that's really all there is. Um, yeah, first place, GT40. Happy days. Right. So we've got Red Atlanta Short, Alpine Ring, Tokyo Circuit, Rio de Janeiro, Blue Mountains Raceway, New York. There's not too many laps on, either, on each of them either. And only six events, so not too bad. So it's kicking things off in Road Atlanta. So how is this Exige going to compare to the VX220? We shall see. Or the Opal Speedster, actually. No, which one did I use? I can't remember now. That might have been the Vauxhall, actually. I don't know what this revs to. I haven't got a clue. I'm just guessing. I think it's between 8 and 9, right? It's only slightly quicker. It's pretty close. I'm getting pushed out of the way, though. That's not a good start, is it? Oh, that's horrible. Oh, that is horrible. I don't know where the Exiges have gone. I didn't actually look at the starting order properly to see where they actually um, started there. This handles pretty well, though. I don't really like this track. This corner always screws me up. I'm trying to get around them without crashing into people. Right, we're better round there. Which one's that? I think that's the Vauxhall. Yeah, just before 9,000. Had to try it once just to see. I'm going to get completely outbraked here. I'll actually just use them as the corner there. Why not? It's actually got pretty decent brakes. Another thing, this engine's really quiet. It's actually hard to hear where you are in the gears. This handle's lovely, though. That was one of the worst first laps ever in terms of crashing and stuff. Right, that was not good again. That's twice I've done that now, for some reason. Right, let's learn this car, learn the track, and stop crashing, hopefully. That's better through there. I'm surprised the Xyz isn't even, like, near me in the track, on the track. It's not actually too much difference to that Vauxhall in terms of speed. To be fair, it does have less power, so... And that was terrible. Again, I need to have a look at a braking point and see what I can do with that. That is one of the only cars I've driven that does not skid going up the hill as well. And this bit's nice and easy. You can go flat out around here. Right, can we do... That's oh, nine seconds better. Can we do this corner right or not? That was better. I should change down before we actually... Go round the corner. Don't do it halfway. It's never good for the weight distribution. Well, this is going loads better. That corner was terrible, though. And I've done it again on there. I never learned my lesson on that corner. This car is very, very good. But I'm surprised that the AI driving the, the Exige aren't doing better. It does seem a bit strange. Right, where can I break here? Let's go at that board. Right, that's way too early again. I don't like that corner. I can never get the braking point right. It usually takes me five laps to learn the track, so that's what I'm giving it. Well, that was better, because I didn't go off the track. That was the only reason. Yeah, I'm still doing that terribly. I think I'm breaking too late, if I'm honest. I 
And I'm surprised that was not a cut. But that's fine. We can deal with it. Oh, that's better around there. Let's not mess this one up now. Got to break more than I think. I think this was the one with the most laps, this track. This is probably worse top end, I think, than the Vauxhall. Did I see it was or not? Right, there's the sign. So slightly after the sign. That wasn't too bad. That was nearly there. That whole section was just horrible. The last two events, the one in the Vauxhall and this one in Nigazij, have been pretty easy. So, I'm trying to think, was the there wasn't Silverstone or Maple Valley, was there? So, or Sakuba. So, it might be an easy championship, to be honest. Blue Mountains is on there, though. They do drive well on Blue Mountains. And I'm not doing that corner well again. I half know what I'm doing, and half don't. See, they're miles behind now. Seven seconds, that's crazy. That's more like it. Ah, this is a fun little car. There's too many laps on this. That, that would have been enough. We've got another two to do. They do seem to even out about eight, nine minutes, like majority of the races in this game. That was definitely a cut, yeah. Well, there's that bump again, that infamous bump. We are absolutely miles ahead. This is one of the... This is the race where I'm like the furthest ahead ever. That is mental. I'm still so bad at that corner. 11 seconds. I'm sure I've never been over 10 seconds ahead before and we've still got another lap to go. I've not done a decent lap yet on this either. Eleven seconds behind. Crazy. It's my best by a thousandth of a second. Yeah, we're looking at basically eight minutes. Is what I'm saying. Right, that was it. A fairly okay lap. Some dodgy sections, but that's definitely my quickest lap, surely. Yes, 106.2. I can't be bothered waiting for them to finish. 46,000 credits, so not too bad. I think, is that a level up or not? Yes, just. Level 42. So I've only got eight more levels to go. Uh, da, da, da. Intercoolers, 25% off. Just for European cars, for whatever reason that is. So, we can see the Vauxhall actually beat both the Lotus Exigias. So is that car better? I don't know. It's strange how we didn't go on Alpine Ring for ages, and now we've done it twice in two races. Or two events, sorry. It's interesting that the Vauxhall start ahead of the um, the Lotus. Again, I'm fairly certain it's... Oops, 0-60 uh, 
times that sort the starting grid, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, God. I was actually trying to give him some room there and be nice, and now he's hit me from behind. God, this AI is not playing ball here. And I've got the penalty. Oh, actually, no, that might have been from the first contact, wasn't it? Now, they usually do that corner quite well. I need to learn the breaking points. This part, they do horribly. And I can't really overtake because I'm going to twat into one of them. Right, that's fine. This car is much better than that Vauxhall. Handling-wise, anyway, at least. I'm trying to do this corner as to not crash into him, yeah. I've never had such an easy championship. This is mental. The Lotus is easy are better than the uh, Vauxhall, but I don't know why those exegesis aren't catching up. Unless it is that if they're further back in the pack, they just don't drive well. The brakes on this are actually very decent. It's funny, this track, because the, the AI drive really well on quite a few sections. Whereas I do not. And then uh, through the middle bit, the chicane sections, they drive unbelievably slowly. This corner, he's going to probably dive bomb me. Most likely. There it is. Predicted that a mile off. I can break later on that one. They always, like, do that corner perfectly. I'm just going to change the fourth because that was screaming in third gear there. Yeah, that can go quicker through there than the Vauxhall. Definitely. The brakes in this are too good. I need to put more faith in them. Yeah, I wonder why it's been Alpine Ring for both of these lightweight challenges. I'm glad they haven't done the speedway, the circle, because that would have been absolutely dreadful. That one's about right. Right, so I've got that one. Okay. This corner I never get right at all. I find it really hard to stick to the inside of that um, that apex. That was better, much later. Two easy tracks in a row. Oh, you can't actually. I'm just going to hold the accelerator. Yeah. Flat out round there. And only just better than my best somehow. Oh my god, that corner. Dreadful. I might not need to be in second, actually. In all fairness. Two more laps. This feels uh, slightly uh, quicker than the other track. Maybe like a minute. I don't know. That was spot on that time. It's just a shame I suck at this next corner. I'm going to go out wide and cut in. Because that's worked for me last time. Like that. I'm just going to do that. That always seems to be quicker for me. Whether it is or not, I'm not sure. That was nice as well. It was a whole second quicker. That's actually quite crazy. 
and go to fourth round here instead of getting engine damage. Flat out around this section, which actually is very nice to do. 1.4 seconds. And I basically did that corner as well as I'm going to do it as well. You really can break late in this exige. It's quite nice. Absolutely bloody miles ahead. This is one of the easiest races I've ever done. Or easiest events, whatever you call them. It's too late on the brakes that time. 121.9, I don't think, think I'm going to beat that. Yeah, that was pretty crap, actually. 10 seconds. I'm just going to win by 10 seconds every time. Actually identical, pretty much. To my previous lap. Oh dear, that was not good. Oh no, yeah, that's ruined it completely. It's fine, we're fine. Nice mountains, though. The game looks pretty decent for 2005, in all honesty. Just checking it is on hard. Yeah, it's on hard. We're still getting that 85% uh, 80, bonus. We're going to stay at 42. We're not uh, going to go over halfway, though. We're not going to get to 43, though. Next race. I just thought we're driving a lot of the same circuits because we've got Blue Mountains as well. The same circuits we used uh, the VX220 for. Oh, that is beautiful. Thank you. Oh, that's actually damaged my car quite badly. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know how I'm going to get away with that one. He just drove off like nothing happened there. How am I going to not get damaged from that corner? I'm going to have to get far ahead. Right. When I'm in second gear going around here, and I accelerate, there's no noise. Then it starts making noise there. It's weird. It's like 5,000 revs. Anything before that, the car's like silent. Is that realistic? I don't know. It's like a switch turns on and it actually starts making noise. Oh, go away. God, that was awful again. Oh, he's in the, the zone of rear pounding. Maybe I should be in first gear. I don't know for those corners. Right, I've avoided that nonsense. I just got up to 48 miles per hour in first. I feel like I'd just literally be in it for a split second and change up though, so... Man, these brakes are so good. It weighs so little, this car. Right, can I avoid crashing into this damn thing? I'm going to go cautiously around it. There you go. Randomly in second gear. Around 5,000 revs. If 
Very weird. I haven't noticed that on any other car so far. It actually looks really nice in black, this car as well. And it's quite, it feels a lot more nimble than the, um, that Vauxhall does, or the Speedster. I'm really surprised the Exige hasn't made it into second place yet, any of them. It's always the Vauxhall behind me. Strange. It's really nice that the last few episodes I've actually used a car that can stop well. Which is not what usually happens. I've had so many cars in this playthrough that just have no brakes. Four seconds quicker. Blimey. Oh, that was my second lap, wasn't it, actually? This track has grown on me quite a lot since I first did it. As long as you can avoid being punted on that uh, hairpin by the AI, it's actually quite enjoyable. It's a real good mix of tight technical sections and then longer sections like this, coming up to a hairpin. I think I prefer it to New York, but I still like the New York circuit. I think it's pretty interesting. That time I was too late on the brakes. Before I was too early, so that was weird. It's been nice not being on Silverstone for a while. I'm looking forward to using the GT40 with an endurance event as well, that would be cool. Car behind is only four seconds. Look how spread out the pack is. I don't think I've ever seen the field quite that spread out with cars that are fairly similar in performance. There's someone pretty much like four seconds behind me, then, and there's two, two four seconds behind me, and then there's a huge gap, like the biggest gap I've seen on the field to the next cars, and then there's people even further behind than that. I think they must crash on this corner. It usually is the fault of this corner. They get stuck on that hairpin, don't they? I think that's probably what's happened there. Look at the, the gap between those two behind me and then these guys coming down this other straight. Absolutely mental.
That was way too wide. What the hell? Why is it always the last lap that I just, like, drive terribly? See, they're only five seconds behind. Compared to the other tracks, it's actually pretty close. I've hit the wall quite a lot in this, but for some reason, I haven't got any damage. That's clear damage. You can see on my bumper. Apparently, that costs nothing to repair. It's actually a longer, longer race, this one. It's going to be about nine minutes, isn't it? He's pretty close. The fact that I'm actually finishing the race and I can see the AI behind me means they don't drive too bad on Tokyo. It's mainly just the bit after the the uh, finish line or the start line for some reason. I don't know if they do it every lap. Definitely on the first lap. That was closer to a nine-minute race, that one. Let's see. Was it the vx 2 behind me? Pretty sure it was. And I'm interested to see what lap he got. Oh, it's the Opal Speedster. 146. 46,000. Very nice. So halfway through. It's Blue Ma uh, Not Blue Mountains. It's um, Rio de Janeiro again. We've literally got like four out of five of the same tracks, pretty sure. That were used in the uh, Vauxhall. That was the worst first corner ever. I want to see how much like difference there is in acceleration if I don't draft. Try not to draft. It's pretty even. I think I'm catching up. Man, they get away with breaking so late on this. I'm terrified of them doing something stupid and me crashing into the back of them, which happens a lot. I need to get ahead of him. It's just got the edge in acceleration, the Exige. I don't know how to act with them. I've never felt so uncomfortable around AI on a game. You just don't know what they're going to do. They might drive extremely quick, quick around one corner and then all of a sudden they'll just give up on the next one. He's driving pretty quick on this one. Or I'm driving slowly. I think it's the latter. That did not go so well. Again, surprised didn't get any damage for that. He's going to do a lunge on this one, so I've got to prepare for that. I just know it's going to happen. Oh, it didn't. He tried it, I think, but then went wide. Right, only four laps of this. Not too bad. See, again, I've got damage actually on both bumpers. I can't remember how that happened, actually. How did we damage both? This is not even going to get close to fifth gear, is it? God. I thought I could go much quicker through there. 
keep messing these corners up really bad. As long as I don't crash, that's the main thing. Yeah, I don't know why, it's just very easy. Again, I'm surprised the exiges don't finish higher up, but that is what it is. It's a hard circuit to not hit the wall on. A little bump there that sends you to the left. And I always do that on that corner. Oh, the understep. This is such a casual episode. I love it. I wonder if the um, the endurance race in the GT40 is actually difficult. Depends which track it's on. Interested to see that. Yeah, that's definitely better in second gear around there, for sure. Not right, going slightly better. I do find this track's hard to get the corners right. You either turn in too soon, or you understeer a lot. Nearly just crashes to the wall. And this corner's always wider than I think it is. I forgot what the last two tracks are. There's Blue Mountains, I'm pretty sure that was one of them. What was the last track? Oh, New York, wasn't it? That's going to be strange in this car. There's a lot of straights. Will I get to fifth gear in this car? That feels more in control in second. There has to be one race where I can get to fifth gear that isn't the Nürburgring. Yes, I did that corner without nearly hitting the inside. I need just my best. Three tenths. Again, quite far ahead. Not as far ahead as I've been on other tracks, but still pretty far. It seems like there's mountains on every track that we go on in the background. So much room to improve on this track. Could have stayed in third there as well. Da -da 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 -da. Bosch bark plugs. I've no idea if this is any quicker whatsoever. Oh, it is. Nearly a second. Surprising. I 
And then I ruined that corner again. Is that the quickest? Yes, it is. By a second. Can't be bothered seeing who's finished where. Another 46,000 credits. Not too bad. Yeah, we're going to be over 42. So we're going up sort of between half 11 and level every, um, every event. So it's not too bad. Two more to go. I didn't actually look which way round the track we were going on this. Is it the same? It's exactly the same way round. We're just doing an identical event as the last lightweight challenge. Strange. I heard someone just crash straight away. Didn't sound healthy. Sounded like a lot of crunching. going to be close. Oh no, he's going to be in the draft zone. Please no. I think he just eased off there. Right, these brakes are good. How good are they? Oh, that was about spot on that. Can I hold off around this part with that unlimited grip of the AI? This is where you think the, uh, oh, the um, Xe should really stand out around this section of the track. Look at him right behind me again. So that was alright, I guess. It was literally half off the track through the entirety of that. trying to learn all the tricks of this track. Now it's staying third round there, for sure. Alright, I should be able to full lock around here. Full speed. It's close, but it can be done. This feels a lot better around this track, for sure. Messed that up big time. Still miles ahead. Now I can break late on this corner, which I always forget to do. Right, that's the feeler lapping. Now we should be pulling away. Hopefully they won't even catch up through the um, technical section on this one. I'm enjoying this car. It's nice to drive. Easy to judge the braking points. Well, easier than some others have driven. Just because they're so bloody good. If you did weight reduction on this and upgraded the brakes, I can only imagine how good it will be. That was terrible around that. I don't mind it this way around now. I've actually done this probably more than the other way around. Seems to be cropping up a lot in the second half of the game for some reason. That's just sliding all over the place on that, uh, that bit. Well, that was dreadful, wasn't it? Come on, I can do a good lap of this. keep skidding all over the place. It's actually quite easy to get it into a slide. The car that's gripped the most and that didn't slide the most is that Viper competition I used. 
the GT one. For whatever reason, it just gripped and just went round each corner with no drama. I need to avoid these curbs. They're not doing me any favours. Five seconds behind, which is actually quite good for Blue Mountains, to be honest. But usually right on my ass. It's very bumpy, that section. It's dreadful. Once you screw the line up, the rest of the corners that follow are usually pretty bad. Look at that, a second down. Crazy difference. Well, that was a little bit better around there. And I'll probably catch up a lot of time through here. Bloody engine damage. Yeah, I've actually gone to my best. That was dreadful as well, really, though. Oh, that's a better line. Right, that's definitely, definitely the best part of the uh, second half of the track. It's been so chill, this episode. How much quicker was that? It was slower. I did not expect that. That's fine. Very consistent laps. That's a better line for you there. Bit of a longer race, this one. Nine minutes. Nowhere in sight, the AI, though. I think I did the um, first lap the best around this part. It's really hard to grip and accelerate up that bit. Right, stay off the curbs. There we go, look. I'm only two tenths down now at that part. Right, that was okay. Could have gone wider out there, but not too bad. Unorthodox, but that worked. Dreadful. Don't know why I was in second gear. Oh well, that was alright. Good enough. That should have been quicker. Hopefully just. Yeah. 13.2. Not too bad. So one more race to go. Uh, I think it's New York. Hopefully only three laps as well. 50 points. We can't lose now anyway. So, can the Exige get into fifth gear? That is the question. It is three laps, which is good. 
It's probably going to be more likely on the um, the flying lap. Huge acceleration advantage, though, when we just like this. Can it reach fifth gear? I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe on the flying lap. Voxel's coming back. I'll let them do their normal thing of absolutely... Oh, no, he's... What's happened to him? Oh, God. Oh. That was not good. I braked about the right time, but then I just messed the rest of it up. Hello. Goodbye. Oh, he's going to do the dive bomb. Dive bomb of doom. I tried to... This this always happens. I try to like avoid the dive bomb and end up going way too wide. If I go for the normal line, they will, like, strike me. Right, so let's get out of the range of them, please. Too late. There's always um, less laps on this track for some reason. That's alright through that. Pull away. Claw, I braked way too much there. That was terrible. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, where's the PGR2 advertisement? I completely forgot to check for that. There it is. Just seen it at the top left. That's really cool. I'll check on the main straight, see if I can see it again. It's not going to make fourth gear or thinking gear. Fifth gear. I can't even speak. Decent. Right, where is the PGR2 advert on this side? I was told to look out on the left. It was definitely on the other side. There it is. Big old thing of PGR2. That's awesome. Can it make fifth gear? No, it's gonna not going anywhere near it. I can't believe that. You need such a long straight to be able to do that. That's better look. Do they crash? Yes, they do. Every time around that corner. I'm basically just going to stop then. 2.42. That is a long lap. basically treating that as PGR then, sliding all over the place. Where are my kudos? It's fairly tail happy, you know. For a short wheelbase, wheelbase car with, like, less than 200 horsepower. It does like a bit of a slide. That was dreadful. Dreadful, dreadful. Getting worse as we go through this. Oh, that's Toys R Us. That's random. McDonald's. BGR2. What else can we see? Can't make anything else out. Mazda.
boards are seeing that on the, the board there. Oh, that exit. That exit was terrible. Is that the pit there? That's a tiny pit, if that is. Or is it on the right-hand side? I don't know. Can I see anything else? I think that was a Mercedes on the top board there. CLK. Miles ahead on this track. It's never usually an issue. It seems to be like the same tracks that pop up that cause issues. Maple Valley. Silverstone. Blue Mountains to a certain degree. I swear there was another hard one. Oh, uh, Sakuba as well. The AI have unlimited grip on Sakuba. I'm aware this is not uh, going well, this race, in terms of my laps, but that's fine. I'm drifting far too much. We must be not far 40% done in the game. So we're really edging towards that halfway mark. Not saying I'll do all the events, um, but, you know, a good chunk of them. Get to level 50, then see where we are, and then do the interesting events. It's advertising Bosch spark plugs everywhere. There's PGR2. Look at the size of that billboard. Very cool. Yeah, it says pit on this side. So that is the pit. It's the smallest pit I've ever seen. There's that entrance and there's the exit. <laughs> crazy. Oh, that was quicker, was it? Just by a tenth. Excellent. 60 out of 60. That's what we like to see. So the Exige has actually came fifth and sixth. That is really surprising. But here we go. All worth it for the GT40. Beautiful. 1966. 485 horsepower. Nine on rarity. Very good in acceleration. I know the gearing's like really long, very long. That's a very pretty model of the GT40 actually. I like the colours as well. Excellent stuff. So, what does that mean? What does that mean for us? So, that's another championship down. I think that's a third of the way there. So, we've done half the professional, less than half the amateur third of the championship and not much at all of endurance but hopefully we'll tick another one off in the next episode and it's going to be this one open to unmodified cars made prior to 1975 so um, I'm just going to hop in the GT40 just to see what it is so I can go in any of these but obviously I'm going to do it in this what is the track for next time oh it's Laguna Seca that's going to be actually quite challenging they're usually pretty good on this track 140,000k. That doesn't make any sense. 140,000 credits. <laughs> Be 140k uh, credits. I can't even speak. So 22 laps of that. 2.24 miles. That is going to be good for next time. Classic sports. And we are getting there. This one I want to try. Is it that one? No, it's not. It's the... Um, I think it's in Championship. There's a... Uh, is it an Asian one? We use GTS cars somewhere. That one. I might have to buy a car for that. and don't know if I can win one. 3.7 million credits, so that's pretty decent. 
Let's have a look at the percentage. Are we creeping towards 40? We've actually gone over 40. 40.6. Nice to see. We are making progress. But uh, that's going to be the end of this episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed, as always. And I'll see you in the next episode.